Hello, I'm Michael from Holy Spirit Activism, and I want to clarify a blog post that I posted on Holy Spirit Activism a few days ago. It's called Why Liberal Theology Paves the Road for Nazism, and it has received a few likes and a lot of criticism, especially in the Anabaptist Collective Mennonite group. Um, so, yeah, I, I want to bring some clarifications. Now, uh, just right off the bat, I'm not saying that um, all liberal or progressive Christians uh, are Nazis or are to become uh, Nazis. I'm well aware that most Christians who identify as liberal or progressive are far away from Nazism. Uh, I would say that most of them lean to the left rather than the extreme right and they emphasize stuff like peace and justice and equality um, rather than anti-semitism, dictatorship and genocide. So no, that's not the point. I'm also well aware that there are conservative Christians, fundamentalist Christians, evangelical Christians uh, that lean to the um, far-right e extremism and uh, yeah, uh, conservative Christians who have been Nazis or Ku Klux Klaners if that's how you pronounce it, uh, and other types of uh, races. Um, so yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I'm well aware of that, and it is precisely because of that that I thought that it was very interesting uh, when I did some research for my little book, uh, which unfortunately is not available in English and probably never will be because it's really written in a Swedish con context. It's called the Jesus Vox Afflicting, which means Jesus was also a refugee. So there, me and my friend Stefan Sverd, who is a pastor in Stockholm, we have been uh, looking at firstly what the Bible uh, says about refugees and immigrants, but we also looked at um, the uh, xenophobic movement both in the 1930s in Sweden and Germany, as well as today uh, here in Sweden primarily, as well as all in, in all of Europe. And what we've found is that many prominent Christians, both in the 1930s and today in Sweden, uh, that promotes Nazism, racism, xenophobia, and so on, uh, are uh, theologically liberal. They're not evangelical, they're not theologically conservative, they're not uh, fundamentalist, um, but they're actually um, liberal in the sense that uh, and some people have asked me to, to uh, uh, define liberal theology, uh, so I want to do that right now. Uh, when I talk about it here, I primarily mean a very critical approach to the Bible. Um, so, for example, uh, Emmanuel Hirsch and uh, Paul Althaus, um, they could say things like the New Testament isn't... Uh, authentic. Uh, the New Testament that we have now isn't really uh, what Jesus and his earliest disciples um, thought and taught um, and, and so they have a very critical um, view of, of, of the New Testament and the Bible uh, in general. And uh, I also define um, this type of liberal theology uh, which I make quite clear in, in the article uh, that you emphasize modern values uh, above biblical values. Um, so when it comes to how you define your morals, what's modern has more weight uh, than what the Bible says. And this, of course, is very related to this critical view um, of the Bible that, that people who uh, have this view share. All right. Um, so I found this very interesting because I guess that most people would suspect um, that Christians who lean to the left are uh, theologically liberal and, and they can say things like, well, the Bible isn't technically the word of God, it's, you know, God's word through man. Or some may even say that, yeah, some parts of the Bible um, are, are not God's word at all. Um, we have had an archbishop here in Sweden who, who is theologically liberal, he's called K.G. Hammar. And uh, yeah, he has said that some parts of the Bible should be burnt. 
and and shouldn't be read and and so on and he doesn't believe in miracles he doesn't believe that jesus was born of a virgin that he walked in water and, and so on and interestingly um the um main candidate uh in the uh, neo-nazi sweden democrat party the main xenophobic party in sweden their main candidate to the church election because we have that in sweden uh, is theologically liberal and has also said that he doesn't believe in the virgin birth and the resurrection and, and stuff like that um, and he is very critical to the new testament doesn't believe that the new testament uh, um, is, is authentic and, and so on so i found this very interesting uh, again you could suspect that um, uh, theolo the theologically conservative and evangelicals uh, are those who are on the uh, political right and even uh, extreme right. Uh, but here we, we do have both in 1930s Germany uh, as well as in modern Sweden several cases of theologically liberal people um, who, who have um, these racist views. So um, that's w the main point of, of the article to highlight this and I think it's, it's very hard to disagree. I had a comment uh, from a friend who is German himself who questioned uh, whether Paul Althaus and Emanuel Hirsch really can be described as liberal and, and said that they rather stood for um, this um, Luther revival or Luther restorationism, if you will, um, which which is partly true, but uh, you know, if you talk about how they view the Bible, um, they're definitely not evangelical. They're definitely not conservative and absolutely not fundamentalist. Um, but but they have this critical view on the Bible, and and I think that's perfectly compatible. Uh, with being a Luther restorationist um, because that, that's not the same thing, right? You, you can have a strong faith in Luther without having a strong faith in the Bible. Um, and then, of course, we have some other people that I didn't even mention in the um, article, but uh, Gerhard Kittel is an example of a, a theologian which I definitely would describe as liberal. Again, if, if we talk about his approach to the Bible, he's liberal. And of course, he was uh, a strong Nazi supporter, an anti-Semite. Um, so I think it's, it's very hard to deny this, um, that there were liberal theologians who, who supported Nazi Germany. And it's, it's also very hard to deny that that's a fact um, in contemporary Sweden um, that I have studied. And we not only have Jonas Åkerlund, which I mentioned, um, this liberal theologian who has the main candidate in the church election, but we have prominent leaders within the Sweden Democratic Party who are liberal theologians. Björn Söder, uh, who is actually the, um, the vice vice chairman of the Swedish parliament right now. He's like the second vice. I don't know the, the proper English term for that. Uh, but he has said that Christianity should be a state religion, in, including uh, paganism. Um, and then, of course, referring to Nordic paganism with Odin and Thor and, and, and stuff like that, which isn't something that evangelicals argue for. He's, he's definitely uh, extremely liberal in his um, theology and in, in his syncretism. All right, so that, that's the main point of the argument, but then he also offer an explanation, and that's really what the title refers to, how liberal theology can pave the road and yeah it's a controversial title I know um, I, I didn't actually mean that all liberal theology uh, will ultimately lead to Nazism uh, but the point that I, I make clear in the article is that in a Nazi society um, liberal theology really opens the way um, it's, it's a clear goal um, for Nazi values to take a hold of the church. And I think this is quite evident if you look at the Deutsche Christen, um, the German Christians, which was the um, main uh, Nazi um, church party, church group um, in, in the 1930s and 1940s. Again, they're not theologically conservative, I wouldn't say. They're not evangelical. I mean, they even argued that um, the Old Testament wasn't valid, <laughs> and then they argued that only Aryan 
Aryan Christians should be members and so on. You don't get those positions by faithful Bible reading. Um, and especially not if, if you're saying that the Old Testament should be excluded, uh, then you're definitely a heretic. And, and I would say very liberal in your approach to the Bible. Alright, so the explanation I offer for why um, this phenomena seem to occur um, is that <clears throat> if you say that um, the Bible isn't authentic, the Bible isn't really reliable, we should be critical to the Bible and so on, then it's, it's quite hard to bind your moral stance to the Bible and, and have the Bible as your moral anchor anchor point because you've basically um, has you have decreased its authority quite much and and questioned it um, to, to such a, a high degree uh, that it's it's really hard to pledge your allegiance to the Bible when it comes to your moral values and this is something that we see time and again uh, with liberal theologians and liberal Christians they will refer to what's modern. Um, so for example if we take uh, K.G. Hamar, um, he in an interview that I had with him um, he talked a lot about the ancient worldview which is false and the modern worldview which, which is scientific and, and accurate and reliable and that's really what should have priority um, both when it comes to knowledge overall and you know how, how we view the world and so on and it was because of that that he denied the existence of miracles but also when it comes to morality and uh, I find this quite common well there are some um, liberal or progressive Christians um, that will use uh, some sort of quite evangelical hermeneutics in that they say that they they want to believe in what the Bible describes and then they will argue for their positions uh, out of the Bible uh, which I would say is quite easy to do when it comes to for example pacifism and economic equality because those are clearly things that the Bible talks about it's much harder to do when you talk for example about um, homosexual ho homosexuals rights and um, you know the rights of LGBT uh, persons L L LGBT um, so, yeah, for example, um, I've encountered some, some articles, some people who argue that the Bible isn't really prohibiting um, same-sex same uh, relations uh, and so on. They try to explain away um, the, the Bible passages like Romans 1 and, and other Bible passages uh, that seem to talk against it. And uh, yeah, quite often those arguments aren't really convincing. But my point now is that that's a different approach to what some other liberal or progressive Christians would do, which is uh, acknowledging that the Bible speaks against same-sex uh, same -sex relations, um, but then simply saying that well, that's uh, an example of where we shouldn't follow the Bible, we should follow our modern values. Um, and, and that's an argument that keeps popping up. Come on, it, it's 2016, you know, we, we need to adapt, we need to progress, um, and we need to embrace the modern values of today. Now, in um, an, um, today's American society or European society, um, that will indeed um, lead to more uh, leftish approaches, especially when it comes to things like L LGBT uh, issues or abortion and things like that. Um, but in a Nazi society uh, that Germany experienced during the horrible decade of uh, between 1933 and, and 1945. Of course, modern values refer to Nazi values. And I think this is quite easy to forget um, that Nazism by several scholars and academics were viewed as 
um, scientific, scientifically accurate. This was uh, Darwinism um, put into political practice. And, and uh, racial biology was um, an acknowledged uh, science uh, that we even uh, had here in, in Uppsala, where I live in Sweden. Uh, and so Nazism was in a sense viewed as this progressive idea. This was the modern new ideas of, of the day. And so I, I can easily see how when you emphasize modern values over biblical values, when you criticize the Bible a lot, um, but accept modern values as something that should have priority, um, then indeed liberal theology has just paved the road open for Nazism. And, and as I say, explain in the article, you know, if, if you rule out the Bible as the, the basis for Christian uh, morality, what have you left? If you just say, yeah, we should do what's modern, that could literally mean anything um, based on what society you live in, right? And, and based on what time live, you live in. Now, does that mean that all liberal theologians become Nazis? No. Um, because some liberal theologians, even if they say that modern values have priority over biblical values, um, when they encounter a Nazi society, they will say that, no, that Nazi society, they represent ancient values. They represent patriarchy or they represent oppression and racism and, and these are the old things of, of yesterday which are horrible and, and that uh, we should discard. Um, so yeah, the, there were examples of liberal theologians in Nazi Germany that didn't support Hitler and, and I acknowledge that. But that doesn't have to be the case um, because if your only moral anchor point is what's modern then if society suddenly becomes horrible um, then according to your moral anchor point that's really what you should adapt to um, that, that's the morals that you should have and of course there's a big danger in that so what I propose instead is of course as always restorationism uh, that we should try as Christians to restore the biblical church that we should have Jesus as our uh, moral anchor point and that we should um, trust the um, testimony that he gives in the scriptures as well as today miraculously uh, prophetically and of course accurate prophecies they don't contradict scripture they uh, acknowledge and confirm them um, so I think that we should have a high high degree of respect uh, for the scripture particularly the the New Testament but also the Old Testament as a background uh, with our focus on, on Jesus and have him as our moral anchor point um, and if we do that we will not become Nazis. Now some someone said that I make the uh, true Scotsman fallacy when, when saying something like that uh, but note that I'm not saying that uh, if we are conservative Christians we can never go wrong um, because I would say that there's a, a big difference between um, being a conservative Christian or even being an evangelical and being a restorationist because um, there's so many people that not only um, call themselves conservative and evangelical but they are part of those traditions that never really have had the intention of restoring the New Testament church um, so for example many evangelicals or conservatives belong to the reform tradition, Calvinism, and that has never uh, ever uh, tried to restore the biblical church. Um, they have uh, brought some principles and some criticism of the Catholic church uh, that are founded in the Bible, but there's so much that they don't even try to go back to the roots. Um, but when it comes to Anabaptism, Pentecostalism, the Jesus movement, they've all tried to restore the biblical church and, and they've all at least initially um, constructed a, a church model which is charismatic which emphasizes peace and justice, pacifism, um, opposing the church state system, having a, a Baptist uh, principle um, of uh, freedom of religion and so on and yeah I think it's very evident if you study early church history that that's how, how the church should should look like 
If you do that, you won't become a Nazi because Jesus wasn't a Nazi. And it's really as simple as that. All right, hope this clarifies. I will try to make my videos shorter in the future, but you'll have to have to enjoy this for now. Thank you for watching. God bless you.